Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Sir, I wanted to check, I uh, wanted to ask you, what do you think is the role of AI when it comes to uh, critical care and patient monitoring, uh, you know, in a, com in a country of scale such as India? Uh, see, if you look at the way critical care is evolving, I mean, the patient complexity is increasing. Uh, there are more and more patients who are sicker and who are coming to the hospitals. And if you look at on a scale basis, if you look at the number of hospitals and the number of ICU beds, they are increasing uh, you know, on a daily basis. And uh, when you compare critical care with other specialties, I think critical care is one area where a large number of patients fall in the grey zones, where uh, you know, in some other specialties, other specialties you have very clear cut. Uh, treatment protocols or you know very clearly as what has to be done. But in intensive care you get a large number of patients uh, whose condition can keep changing and fluctuating. So the situation is more dynamic and uh, to monitor such patients on a continuous basis becomes more and more difficult. At the same time the decisions that need to be taken for treating these patients have to be taken in real time. Unlike other specialties where you get time. And each patient produces so many data points that at some point of time it becomes very, very difficult for a human brain to analyze all the data points and then give a realistic time-based diagnostic or a therapeutic intervention. And that is where artificial intelligence, I think, is going to play a major role. Now we are in a stage where we are, you know, there are already many conditions where a lot of data points have already been kind of collected, analyzed. I think in the future what we are going to see is the data points which have been collected, we are going to come up with AI based algorithms which is going to help us in real time monitoring, real time diagnosing and giving real time solutions so that every patient whose clinical condition based upon that patient's profile can have a very personalized treatment. Now we are moving away from an era where we generalize treatment. We are now looking at each patient as a different, you know, uh, different entity. The same treatment options that you would go give in general to all the patients may not be applicable. For example, if I have a patient with a specific condition and I apply the similar principles of treatment to all those patients with a similar condition, not all patients are going to benefit. So we have identified that each patient is unique, each patient is different. And I think in the future, AI is going to help us uh, you know, personalized treatment depending upon each patient's uh, maybe genetic makeup, uh, demographic uh, characteristics, the phenotypic characteristics. So that's where AI is going to come up in a big way. Sure, sir. So, when it comes to adoption, we certainly know that there is a lot of scope for uh, you know AI to be adopted in all aspects of life. Uh, but uh, we do not see the adoption growing, uh, you know, just the way we will envisage it to. Uh, what are the challenges and how do you think this can get a push, particularly in a country such as India, which is trying to be modern but yet orthodox at hand? Uh, I would like to differ a little bit. Please. Okay. You see, if you see most of the advanced, uh, you know, in India, in a country like India, you have hospitals which have probably some of the best infrastructures which can be compared to any part of the world. So. Uh, in, in, in terms of technological advancements, in terms of uh, you know, having the advanced systems in healthcare, I think India is already there. Right? Um, the fact that the medical tourism has gone up significantly and India is a popular desti destination for a large number of countries uh, speaks about the volumes of uh, technological or infrastructure or the medical expertise or the skill that is needed. So mm -hmm. India is there at, uh, uh, you know, which is already kind of uh, there as far as the healthcare advancements are concerned. Yes, there is still a lot to be done and that's purely because I think we are, we are, a, we are a massive country and there is wide variations in the way the healthcare is delivered in different different parts in different different uh, socioeconomic status. So I think with respect to the role of AI, right, uh, as far as critical care is concerned, right, we are still not completely at a point where uh, we have solutions to many, many conditions. We are still at a point where we are collecting data. We are still at a point where we are generating machine learning. We are still at a point where we are trying to analyze and develop algorithms. I think in the coming future, we will have specific algorithms which can be applicable at the bedside. Right now, a lot of work is happening. 
I don't think we are still at a point where we only have algorithms uh, which can be readily applied to the bedside. And once these things come in, I think India would be one of the first countries to employ this. I have absolutely no doubt that India is going to be at the forefront and I am just hopeful that somebody from India is going to come up with you know, many, many of these uh, algorithms because the amount of data that we can generate, the amount of patients we have and our patients are very unique and very different from what the West is. I mean, the medical conditions that we see in India are different, are unique to what the West is. So, I hope that in the coming days, somebody from India, or, you know, the technological partners from India, are going to develop AI algorithms which will be unique and applicable to our, our, our you know, Indian population. So, I am I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that India is not going to lag behind in that.